a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. Semiconductor ETFs, or CHIP ETFs, as they are sometimes known, is what we're going to talk about now with our ETF Research Director, Nina Mishra, who joins me here. So technology stocks uh, still on a tear here. Yes, so technology is, again, the best performing sector this year. Mm -hmm. It's up about 41% versus S&P 500's gain of just about 26%. And in fact, tech uh, accounts for a large part of S&P 500 too. Yes. So it, in fact, technology has been driving S&P 500 and NASDAQ's gains to this year. And within broader technology sectors, there are some subsectors and industries like chips, semiconductors that mm -hmm. have done much better. The broader chip index is up about 50%, and there are stocks like AMD, which has sold more than 100%, 110%, LAM Research, 94%, Applied Materials, 73%. Now, one of the main reasons for uh, this excellent performance is that these chip companies, they have a lot of exposure to China. Uh, so China does, does that account for the good performance or just more volatility? Volatility too, but whenever there's trade optimism, these stocks benefit. Uh, late last year, they had plunged because there were some concerns about mm -hmm. the trade deal. Now, as uh, optimism, as there is optimism regarding uh, trade talks, mm -hmm. these stocks have been doing much better. So, but they will remain volatile till a final Decision, trade, yeah, yeah, a final trade agreement. Uh, agreement is reached. But apart from that, uh, uh, there's so many new growth areas for chips. Mm -hmm. uh, Internet of Things, self-driving cars, cloud computing, yeah. uh, and then uh, virtual reality. Rollout of 5G will require a lot of faster and more efficient chips yep. because they are used in everything from iPhones to gaming consoles to whatever you want to talk about. Uh, so that's why there is a, there are a lot of growth areas, but this is a cyclical, volatile sector that investors should remember. Let's just say for the sake of conversation that a final trade agreement with China is not reached. It was not able, the two sides were just unable to get together. Are we going to see like a real quick turnaround, a downturn in these stocks? Uh, no, I don't think so because, you know, no one thinks that the trade agreement is a certainty this year because we keep on getting these conflicting yes. news reports. So I think some uncertainty is already built in the prices. Okay. But because there are so many growth areas and you know, all companies, they need chips, whether it is Apple or Amazon or any yes. other company, they all need better, more efficient, faster chips, which sure. are being manufactured by these companies. So that is why I think there is longer term growth potential, but volatility will be there. So the demand will still always be mm -hmm. there. All right, let's take a look at uh, the iShares uh, Semiconductor ETF, uh, the PHLX Semiconductor ETF. The ticker is SOXX. Uh, it's the most popular largest chip ETF. It follows a modified market cap weighting, so it takes on into account uh, market capitalization, and then uh, there's a cap of about 8% on individual securities. It charges 46 basis points and has more than two billion in uh, assets under management. Now, to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page, Zach's rank number two ETF. You can read our re research report, check out our articles, and then go to the external home page, iShares web page for this ETF to learn more. Now, if you look at the portfolio, NVIDIA, which is up more than 4% today <laughs> on a couple upgrades, is the top holding. Intel, then Broadcom, Qualcomm, and Texas Instrument. AMD, also the best performing stock, also has a sizable position in the portfolio. But due to the 8% cap, all these are brought to 
within 8 percent at the time of rebalancing. So, there is not a lot of exposure to any single company. What about the Vanek Vectors Semiconductor ETF? The ticker is SMH. Now, this is also market cap weighted, but it does not impose the 8 percent cap that the earlier ETF has. Uh, it holds 25 largest U.S. listed chip companies, uh, 35 basis points expenses, and 1.5 billion in assets under management. Now you can go to the code page, and from there, the external home page, the Venec Vectors uh, web page for the CTF, you can look at the portfolio and other details. Now, as I mentioned, there is uh, not a cap, so that is why TSM, and it holds U.S. Listed, listed companies, so TSM is listed in the U.S., although it is a Taiwanese company. Mm. Uh, it accounts for more than 13 percent of the portfolio, and then you have Intel, NVIDIA, Texas Instruments, and a couple uh, companies, uh, popular chip companies um, in the portfolio. And because of uh, just 25 holdings, the portfolio is more concentrated and more top heavy. What about the Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF? This one is an equal weighted ETF, and it has 35 holdings. So due to equal weighting, the, it has a tilt towards smaller firms. So it may be a little bit more volatile within this volatile sector too because of higher exposure to smaller companies. Mm -hmm. uh, this also charges 35 basis points and has over 400 million in assets under management. You can go to the code page and use the link to go to uh, State Street's web page for the CTF. You can look at holdings and other details. So you will see that all these companies, they have almost 3 4% weight in the portfolio. Corvo, Synaptix, AMD, Sirius Logic, Skyworks, NVIDIA, Intel. Finally, Invesco Dynamic Semiconductors Portfolio. The ticker is PSI. This is a smart beta ETF, so it uses some quantitative uh, methodology, uh, proprietary methodology to select and weight its holdings. It's 30 holdings. This is the most expensive of the, uh, the ones that we discussed today. Uh, it has about 196 million in assets under management. Again, you can go to our code page and the web page for Invesco. Now, it uses, as I mentioned, investment merit criteria, including price momentums, earnings momentum, quality, management action, and value. Now, if you look at the portfolio, NVIDIA, Intel, Applied Materials, Broadcom, and Qualcomm are the largest holdings with a little over 5% weight in the portfolio. And how do they all compare to the broad market? So on this slide, I have the performance of these four. So you will see the first three products have done almost uh, same kind of performance. They have delivered between 47% and 49% return this year, whereas the Invesco product has lagged behind slightly. It is up a about 37 percent this year, whereas the S&P 500 is up about 25, 26 percent this year. Do you own either of these? I own the iShares ETF and the ETF investor portfolio. All right. Thank you for bringing us up to date on semiconductor or chip ETFs. And don't forget, there's always more ETF information in the uh, ETF section of Zax.com. Funds tab in the top toolbar helps get you to a lot of written commentary and a lot of written articles like Nina uh, alluded to a moment ago. And then if you want to hear more of what Nina has to offer in the way of ETF information and interesting interviews, she does a weekly podcast in the ETF section. Uh, I'm sorry, in the podcast section of Zax.com. So many sections here to talk about. 
Go to the bottom of uh, the homepage, click on the word podcast, and it'll help to get you to that part of our website. And uh, if you've been looking to or are interested in following Zach's market insights like buys and sells, um, recommendations from the different portfolios. And if you wanted to always do that in real time, well, now you have an opportunity to do that for a limited time. You can take a look into all of that information and into services that up to now have been closed to outsiders, only open to Zach's subscribers. You can do that for only one dollar. But like I said, it's for a limited time. So all you need to do to get more details is visit zax.com slash promo. All right, I think I've given you everything that you need to know. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.